Welcome everyone to a subject that is not as pleasant as I would like it to be. However, here goes. This is how I killed my Vandas. And then I will also go and show you what I've got left. I will try to include some footage of the Vandas that I've lost this year, 2021. And I will try to justify my losses, explaining my mistakes, where I was headed, and how it came to be that I've lost some Vandas. Now I did put in the title, how to kill your Vanda. That is obviously nobody's intention. Nobody goes out to buy an orchid to then eventually see it die. The reality, however, is in front of you. This is a Vanda Tessellata Black, supposedly. She did not bloom black, but she bloomed a beautiful sort of off beige color footage, which I will be including. So this was my Vanda Tessellata Black, for lack of a better name, in 2020. And my goodness, finally she bloomed. And I was not too impressed with the colors of the bloom. I was expecting something a bit more darker and so rich as the name would suggest, Tessellata Black. But her fragrance had me booked. The most beautiful, intense fragrance, if you think Vanda Denisoniana is strong, this one was triple, quadruple that. And yes, I was in love and I said she is worth keeping. And for that reason, I didn't give her away. And I was looking forward to more of her bloom spikes this year in 2021. No bloom spikes in 2021, and the disaster that you see in front of you is what I'm going to be talking about today, is how to kill your Vandas. Everything else I say today, please do the opposite so that this doesn't happen to you. First of all, if you want to consider this a mistake, is if you grow your Vandas so well that they get so big and they start to get nice, robust, and lush, know that their demands will increase. The bigger they get, the more the climate has to be according to what they need. So if you cannot provide an environment that will be conducive to a massive Vanda, then I would highly, highly recommend that when you do your research and you get your Vanda in, make sure that the Vanda that you're getting will still be happy in your environment in five years time. Otherwise, it could be that you're gonna have to either give it away or it's going to deteriorate just like mine. Mine did not just deteriorate because of my climate and because it was growing so big. In 2021, I was faced with several issues. One of them was that my RO water system broke down, almost produced next to nothing, and I was harvesting all night in order to be able to get one bucket, then all day in order to get another bucket, and I had to make a choice. In the past, I had a Vanda tub, and I used to submerge all my Vandas all the way up to the stem. No problem whatsoever. No, I didn't drown anything out. And none of the cakeys at the bottom of this Vanda, as my prime example, rotted out or anything like that. It's just I couldn't provide the water. I needed 150 liters per week to keep that water fresh, to keep it from getting algae, and to make sure that my Vandas during the hottest parts of my year are well hydrated and get enough fertilizer into their system to support their growth. So in order to save on the RO water, I started to do a 50-50 mix with my tap water, which is atrocious quality. However, I thought if I put 50% RO water, which is pure, let my tap water sit for 24 hours before putting it into my Vanda tub and mix it with my RO water, that I would be able to get away with it, seeing as my Vandas were quite big, they were established, they should be strong enough to take it. They didn't, they weren't. Unfortunately, whatever it is in my tap water destroyed the Valaman, and that is very clear to see on this one right here. And let's get in a little bit closer. So what you see right here, all the black here, that is part and parcel of dried off algae from back in the day. There's nothing wrong with that. That was algae and it was fine with all the algae on it. You could see that old roots branched. It was fine. But the velamen literally cannot perform anymore, even though the green inside is still there. It is not doing its job anymore. I destroyed that outer sponge absorption structure that has all my roots struggling to take up water. They look old, they look brittle. They look as though 
they are dead. Now you saw that one root still had green in it, but if it was still functioning according to how it should, then the Vanda shouldn't be looking like this. So that was a very, very sad result of my RO system breaking down and as is typical in the middle of the hottest part of the year. The next thing then I would say, do not, do not overdose on any pesticides or any fungicides. You see here, all these black dots. These were the ones that I was looking at at the beginning of the season. And I thought, you know what? I'm expecting several days of hard and heavy rain. I'm going to use my copper fungicide to get in there and stop whatever this is from getting worse and worse and taking my Vanda out. Anticipating a lot of rain, I added a little bit more into my copper fungicide doses, more than what the manufacturer recommends, thinking I can dose my Vandas with my copper fungicide, and then the rain will do a beautiful flush and everything is going great. The rain didn't come. So 24 hours later, I was watering my Vandas as I have to, a lot, but the copper fungicide has this characteristic, as it should, it kind of sticks to the leaves, so that it can do its job. So I was watering my roots and everything I thought was gonna be okay and I watered heavily because, you know, no rain. 48 hours later, still no rain and then I got worried because none of my copper was flushing off. So I went in and wiped the leaves down as best as possible but the damage now had hit again. If my roots had any chance of branching after getting damaged by the mix of the RO water with my tap water, the copper fungicide did the rest. It took out whatever was possibly able to recover. And bit by bit, I've been watching my Vanda deteriorate throughout the season. And I think it will be time to say goodbye, unless these keikis find it in their heart somehow to give me a root. Let me get in even a little bit closer and let me show you something else. The amount of flushing and wiping and cleaning I have done, I don't know if it's visible here, but there's a blue mark right in there. That is still copper residue and that leaf came out far too easy. But you see this blue right here? I hope so. If not, I'll take a picture and insert a picture. That is still copper fungicide from back in April or May when I did this treatment. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Do not overdose. If possible, use something that is not even industrial. Now, I'm speaking from my experience. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do, but how to kill your Vanda? <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. If you overdose on pesticides or fungicides, the Velamen gets destroyed and it cannot even do its job anymore. This orchid used to be a vigorous, vigorous root grower to the point I was wondering how the keikis would even be able to emerge from that cage of roots it had created. Well, not anymore. Leaf loss is rapid and rampant. It's coming off fast right now, faster than I even anticipated. It's all looking terrible. Now, in all of this with regards to researching prior to purchasing an orchid and bring it into the collection, of course, I thought I did my due diligence and I thought that I had eight months, nine months of perfect climate and all my watering would subsidize for the lack of humidity. And it did work. For the first three years, I had gorgeous bandas growing incredibly well, spiking over and over and over again. It was divine. And then the perfect storm came, a mixture of technical issues plus wrong application of products. That is when I would then say I overestimated my competence with regards to these beauties. And I said goodbye to another Vanda that I had, a Denisoniana cross. She was dark. She was called Chocolate Star. She went down really, really quickly and she didn't even get copper treatment. It was the water. Another one I had was Lavender Miss Louie. She held on for a while and then the copper treatment did her in. She was not as, let's say, she was vigorous, but clearly not as vigorous and resilient as the supposed Tessellata Black. Massive, massive disappointment for me in 2021. 
but a recognition as well that just because Avanda will come in and it is wonderfully grown and it does well for the first three years, as the orchid grows, is the environment good enough? And if I take all the little technical issues and also my copper dosing mistake out of the equation, if none of that had happened, would my climate still be good enough? Would I still be able to take care of a Vanda of this size based on my environment? And the answer would have been no. I did not know that when I bought them in. Now I know, and I will not be getting any more large vandas into my collection because lesson learned, overestimated my competency and overestimated the requirements of a large vanda in my climate where I have next to no humidity for the majority of the year. 30% just doesn't cut it. And if I cannot then submerge the orchid, for four hours into a bucket to counteract the heat and the dryness and keep it happy. This is something I should have recognized and understood before I got myself these beautiful giants. So let's get away from this sad topic and I'll show you what I have left as to what I consider large. Not as large as this one, but maybe there will still be some Vandas in my collection come 2022. And while I'm here, let's do some multitasking here. Getting some water is Vanda Leopard Yawn. It's a made up name, but this is a medium sized Vanda. As you can see behind her there, getting water now is Vanda Denisoniana, a large Vanda. Now, both of these also had copper treatment. Both of these are still alive, but the roots are not happy. All the Vandas that I've lost, including these two, after recognizing my mistake, I went at it with a lot of seaweed and a lot of calcium magnesium to try to counteract whatever damage I had done, get some growth hormones in there because of the seaweed and hopefully kickstart more root growth. It hasn't happened yet. I am sincerely hoping that I will not lose these two as well because both their roots are showing the same symptoms as the other Vanda I just showed you there, the Vanda Tessellata Black. These are not happy Vanda roots, as you can see. When I spray them, you can see all the damage, not necessarily the cracks, because that can happen on any Vanda, but you can see how black they are. And that is from copper, as well as water damage because of the mix 50-50 that I mentioned earlier. A massive, massive shame. My Denisoniana bloomed for me the first time this year after three years in my collection. And I do believe a lot has to do with the fact that it has had so much stress. I would like to take credit for the blooms for all the right reasons. The fact that my Denisoniana bloomed is probably, yeah, all the stress, which is fine. I got to see the blooms. However, I would really, really like to keep this one. I don't want to lose it. So I'm still fighting for it. A lot, a lot of water, as you can see, even this time of year. But in this case, now I've stopped with the seaweed. I do apply calcium magnesium every once in a while, but I've stopped with the seaweed because of the season. I don't want to be pumping growth hormones into something that in its own right kind of slows down quite a bit. There's still hope for Denisoniana, even though it really breaks my heart every time I water these roots and see the black. The same with my leopard yawn. Awful. Let's get in a little bit closer. There you can see the worst of it. That's bad. Not this, this is sunburn, but this. And even the stump that I cut off early in the season, there's no action there at all. Not a green tip in sight anywhere. So these might still be viable. They're still fleshy, they've still got green in them, but they are certainly, certainly not functioning to the maximum capacity that they should. So there you go. That's how you kill Vandas. Don't do what I did. Do the opposite, especially when it comes to research and making sure that their environment is there when the Vanda is grown well and triples in size and suddenly five years down the line, the demands increase. 
I could kick myself for overestimating my competence. I really, really could. I hate losing any orchid, but when it comes to a mistake on my part, I mean, if an orchid gets taken out by pests or rot and you couldn't manage and whatever else, there are so many factors that can come into play losing orchids. But overestimating my competence, that is where I find, yeah, I should have known better. Anyway, not necessarily good news video, but as a little recap for, you know, 2021, the losses I have suffered over my Vandas, those are the ones that are stinging the hardest at the moment. And yeah, just wanted to share that with you. The good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> I really appreciate your time. I hope that this was helpful. Please don't make the same mistake as I did. I hope that all your Vandas are growing great and I am super jealous if they are. Let me just be really, really honest about that. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day, everybody. On one condition, of course, as always, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.